Our goal on this show this year is to drink beer from all 50 states. Today, four of them weigh in with big time lagers. And I'm going to bait for beer drinkers basically forever is, which is preferable, a bottle or a can. We'll put it to the taste test. He's Jody McDonald, I'm Glenn Macnow. We're at Kings Road Brewing Company in Haddonfield for a new episode of What's Brewing. What's Brewing? I'm Glenn Mackin, along with my pal and radio partner, Jody McDonald. We're at a great place today, Kings Road Brewing Company in Haddonfield. Terrific, great menu, fun atmosphere. We'll talk more about that as the show goes on. But Jody Mack, one of the goals of the show this year. Oh, let's start with what we're drinking, because we're drinking a great... Yeah! Yes, we're drinking... Jersey, this, my friend. Yeah, this is their Kings Road Lager, American Lager. That's good. That is nice, crisp. Very nice. Comes in at 5.3%. I actually really like this can that they have here. Uh, really nice beer. And lagers are one of my favorites. I know it's your favorite, right? I'm a lager guy, always have been, or probably always will be. So, we decided today that since it is your style, and since I'm trying to do beer from all 50 states, let's trade some really good American lagers. What'd you bring me? Um, and you said, do a little research on this. I yeah, mean, didn't really have to because it's been <laughs> this, around this show forever. Homework. In case you haven't noticed, Macno and I have both been around forever. Oh, not as long as an Narragansett goes back to the eight, 19th century. The 1800s wow. was first uh, put out in 1890. No, you're a former New England guy. Still get no. up to the Cape. Oh, every I drank once that up in college. A lot of it. It was good and it was cheap. Huge. By the way, you're gonna pour some? Yes. Okay. Huge in New England, and I did see this as per Beer Advocate. Would you? You would know better than me. Yeah, yeah. That's a legitimate oh, oh, rating yeah. service. Oh, sure. The most highly rated lager in the United States. Really? As per Beer Advocate. Well, let's find out what and we I've think. I've had mine before. Uh, my fair share. Here's to you. Let's see what we think. Yeah, I like it. You know what it is to me? It's a, it's like a beach beer, right? A little bit. Yeah. The Cape, I'm the Cape. Yeah, I could do and that. And another thing for Narragansett for me was always associated with the Red Sox. Hey, neighbor, have a Gansett. There you go. That we used to, oh God, they advertised Red Sox games for years. Forever. All right, I'm giving you something from Delaware. I think everybody thought Delaware will go 60 minute IPA. I know that is not something that you would like, but you might like this which is First State Triangle out of Middleton, Delaware. Who, what, where, what'd you say? Which, what? What was the name of it? First State. First State Triangle. Triangle. Triangle, and this is their can, it has a nice triangle on it. Oh, okay. okay. They make another it. beer, I think a circle, a rectangle, different styles. Too much work. Is there lager? Um, you go first. Um, oh, I like the Gansett better. Yeah. Let me have that can. Not bad, but it's it's, it's kind of it's clean. Uh, it's you get a little melon in it, I think, but it I just don't think it has enough to it. Melon. I didn't taste the melon until you said melon, but you're right. There is a melon yeah. taste to it. Yeah. It's not it, bad. Yeah, it's crushable. Yeah. But it's not exciting. I'm more of a cancer guy. I okay. Guess. Two more, Jody Mac, because we got to drink a lot of beer okay. here. Okay. There's 50 states in the country, and we're gonna try them all. Not today. This is from Tennessee, of all places. This is Tiny Bomb American Pilsner. This is from Memphis. This is a very low alcohol beer, 4.5%. This is getting into your Budweiser territory, my friend. Uh, and here's what they say on their website. The soft waters of Memphis Ooh. are almost identical to the soft waters of Pilsen, Czechoslovakia, or Czech Republic, where the Pilsner beer style originated not only do we love the style of beer, our amazing water makes Memphis the best place to make it. I don't think of Memphis when I think of I water. I was going to say, not my first thought of Memphis. No. Best water on the planet. Let, but let us see. We'll try anything. Tiny Mine's Bomb right. American Pilsner. Light. Yeah. It tastes like a light beer. Yeah. Which is not bad if you like light beer. And you do. But uh, No. Oh. I, I want full alcohol. Oh, it's too light beer. for you. Yeah, okay. no. Uh, it's under the Budweiser Miller thing to you. 
Budweiser is not. There's Bud Light, and then there's okay. Budweiser, and All there right. is a difference. All right, here's they one more. Down, let, let me steal two glasses. My beer. Let me steal two glasses from you. This, my friend, from Louisiana. I have uh, family in Louisiana. Well, ask them if they've ever had Abita Purple Haze. Watch this, Jody. Oh yeah. Oh okay. You notice the color's a little different. Eh, maybe not so much. I need one more. This is a lager brewed with real raspberries and wheat malts, Vanguard hops, which I tend to like. The berries and fruit aroma, tartly sweet taste, subtle purple color. I don't really see the purple color. Maybe a little bit? Not really. Am I going colorblind? No, this is, I put it right next to a previous one we drank. They look very similar. Okay, it's, it's a dessert beer kind of. Let's see. Okay, dessert. Yeah, that's exactly the way to describe it, dessert. Yeah. You wouldn't sit down and order one, two, three, four, five at the bar of beans. All right, we got to judge these real fast. One to 100, Narragansett. Um, damn good. I'm going like 85. I'm going 80, so we both like that. How about the first state? Not near as good. Sorry, 55. Uh, I went 45 on that. How about the um, uh, Tiny Bomb? Better. 70. Okay, I go 60. And the Abita Purple Haze? If I'm having it with However a meal, you judge it. I'm good. Yeah, okay. I'll go 75 on I, it, but I'm just 65. not going to be drinking a All lot. Right. Trivia question. Narragansett Can starred in a movie. What movie did the Narragansett Can and? make an appearance? That This can, yes. It's got to be a Boston movie. With sharks. Oh, really? Jaws. Quint, remember the Jaws when Quint crushes the can? Yes. That was an arrogance. It was a Gansett. Now, okay. one other thing I want At to show you. At least it's not Mystic Pizza. I thought that's where you were We're going watching on the screen. This is Animal House. You're seeing this is John Belushi crushing a can on his head. Impressive. I think I can do it. Re you're going to give that a shot? I'm going to give it a shot. You ready? One, two, three. Hey. There wow. you go. You did better than I thought. When we get back, we're going to talk about German beers and beer festivals. He's Jody Mack. I'm Glenn Mack now. <laughs> it's What's Brewing. Park ain't it free, y'all? Hey! Four bucks. Yes. With so many affordable things to do in Montgomery County, PA, go ahead. Free out. Whether you're lounging at the beach, exploring the Swarthmore scene, or kicking back in our Lynn Villa Beer Garden, Ship Bottom Brewery brings the beach to you. We're thrilled to call LBI our home, where we've crafted award-winning beers perfect for our beloved locals, surfers, and seasonal beach visitors. Our refreshing brews are a year-round beach party, thriving in the summer heat, and welcoming chilly winters with open arms. These island beers are perfect for every season and making every sip a mini vacation. Ship Bottom Brewery, where the sun-kissed season never ends and the ice-cold pours are an experience you'll savor long after you've left the island. Hey, welcome back to West Brewing from Kings Road Brewing Company in Haddonfield. Jody McDonald, Glenn Mackin, we've classed it up a little bit. Our pal Natalie Egnoff is with us. Glenn, I am so happy to be here. This is so exciting. This place is awesome. It's great to be here with Jody, too. I mean, thank you guys so much for oh, having yeah. me. Oh, yeah, and that's going to be doing features for us all year. We're going to talk about that in a second. But first, we are drinking their Schwarz beer, which is basically the, hold on. Mm. It's the lager, and they add chocolate. And, um, oh, wow. Yeah, it's really nice. Dark Chocolate. malts. I like, it's a nice malty beer. I love a malty beer. By the way, I just want to say, all those beers we're doing for the 50 states are uh, brought to us by Lower Marion Beverage Company, Jim Martin over there in Ardmore. If you go to that store, any beer that is on our show, you get at a 10% discount. Nice. So get to Greenfield Avenue in Ardmore. All right, you're going to be going to a German beer fest. Let's talk a little bit about German beers. I brought some of my favorites. Okay. This is the Flensburger Pilsner. This is the Spaten beer I've always liked. Uh, Hacken for sure. And Jody, I need you to pronounce that one. Yeah, you got no shot. Come on, give it a, shot. Give it a try. Where's it at? Let, where's it? Let me see. We. Come on, Nat, go for it. Why, why, Stop, why Henstoffer? 
The Henstefer. The Henstefer. The Henstefer. The Henstefer. Uh, the Henstefer. Right? There it is. It, God bless you. By the way, oldest brewery in the world. It's almost a thousand years old. Wow. This brewery. Thousand. Yes. So. I want to talk about our photo contest. We're doing it every week. We ask you to submit a photo. You can do it at Real Glenn Mac now, at What's Brewing, uh, Twitter, Facebook. And this week, very simply, we're asking you to send us a picture of you drinking beer at a beer festival. There are many beer festivals. Yes, there are. You went to one. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I actually had the opportunity to attend the uh, German Beer Festival at the German Society of Pennsylvania. Uh, this past week and I've tried I had to try a lot of these beers and I'll tell you what it was a really 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 awesome time not only were there fantastic beers from all over the state of Pennsylvania there was a cheese cave there was arm wrestling wait, wait, what? there was a what a, a cheese cave cave a cheese Not cake no cave. cheese cave okay. it was a cave of all these incredible cheeses oh, from God. around the oh, state oh I love that oh I was in heaven I, as soon, I tried all the beers and I went right for the cheesecake. There was a beer last show, which was also interesting. And just so many, I mean, so many cool people hanging out, having a great time, trying all these incredible beers. And I got to try some too. Well, let's take a look. Hey Glenn, it's Natalie Eganoff here. I'm at the German Society of Pennsylvania 11th Annual Beer Fest. It's packed to the brim with people in there. Uh, all who love beer, all who are celebrating the beer community, and we're gonna talk to a bunch of them today. There's so much happening. There's this area over here. There's a burlesque show, there's arm wrestling, there's a cheese cave. There's so much going on today, so I'm super excited to be here. Uh, so let's go take a look. So this is Tom from Dock Street Brewery. In his leaderhouse, in your dress for the occasion, uh, uh, do you wear that often, or is this just for a beer fest? Twice a year. Yeah. Twice a year. Yeah. And what, what's your favorite part about today, aside from dressing for the occasion? Uh, I think the the selection of beers is probably the the greatest thing about this event. Yeah. And what do you guys have today? Today we have a uh, Bohemian Pilsner and uh, our Doppelbach Illuminator. Doppelbach Illuminator. That sounds yeah. German. Is the cheese cave this way? Anybody yeah. know where the cheese cave is? The cheese cave. The cheese cave? Right around to the right. Well, we were the first brewery that Marnie called 11 years ago to get this ball rolling. Appreciative to be uh, honored in such a big event like this. We were the America's oldest brewery, and we make a true lager beer, and that's what this is all about, German lagers. Uh, what do you guys have coming up in the spring? I mean, it's baseball season. We just came out with our Bach beer on Thursday, and it's going to be a huge hit. We didn't have it in 10 years, wow. and people can't wait for it. Right oh, here. There it is. Yingling Bach. It smells, I smell bratwurst. I was saying to somebody, it's, it's like a science. So how do you know? I mean, <laughs> as the owner of yards, how do you know when you perfected the science? Uh, we, we, it's a lot, a lot of, of hours of tasting. Right. And it's a lot of hours of like trying other people's beer okay. and seeing like, I like that. I want to make it mine and make it better. And that's how kind of how we come up with our what our ideas for beer and how we've been doing it for years. Okay, and I, I'm drinking your Scarlet Lady. It's my first beer of the day and it's awesome. So tell me about your brews and what you guys got going on and in your process and you know, what do people need to know? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Stouts is back, Carol retired a couple years ago. Um, so now we partner with the local brewery to bring the beer back to market. Um, we just actually re-released uh, Scarlet Lady uh, very recently. It's been going really Very well. tasty. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a great ESB. I love it. The style you don't see that often, so it's really cool to see. Um, so we have that. We've got a new guava sour that's really cool. Um, so we're doing a couple like uh, more modernized things, a couple more unique things, uh, but we're still doing our traditional German style beers. If you love a little bit of funky cheese, that red cat has a little bit of a this, this quality to it. Okay, cool. I love it. It's really great with the dark beers here today. Perfect. <laughs> now it's time for me to enjoy. Cheers. See you guys next week. Natalie, that looks like a great time. I'll tell you what, and there's more where that comes from. I, I'm so excited about all the features that um, are coming up and all the places that I'll get to be going. And again, this is this is so fun. And thank you, Glenn. It's well, great to work with you again. We're delighted to have you as part of the show. By the way, this place here, Kings Road Brewing Company, last year, speaking of German beer, sponsored the New Jersey State Stein Holding Competition. Joe, do you remember? Yes, you we were did with that me last year. Last year yes. when we did this. How'd you do? And, and it, no, we didn't do we it. Didn't we, we, oh. Jody, we're smarter than that. Jody put on this referee shirt and judged it, and it was a lot of fun, and they do it here, I think, in October. 
So come out here and do it. All right, when we get back, big debate forever. Does beer taste better in a can or a bottle? Coming up next from Kings Road Brewing in Haddonfield, Jordan McDonald, Natalie Eganoff, Glenn Macnow, What's Brewing? Hey, Glenn, what brings you into our King of Prussia tap room today? Well, Andrew, I'm meeting a few friends for a beer before our big event tonight. King of Prussia is the perfect location. Yes, indeed. Contract and Brewing's four spots are all great for any event. Big plans for tomorrow? I'm going to enjoy happy hour at the rec room in Phoenixville before some rousing games of ping pong and shuffleboard with the family. Oh, you can't be the rec room when it comes to food and fun for the whole family. How about this weekend? Saturday, I'm riding my bike along the Schuylkill River Trail before stopping at Conchi Tap Room for some post-ride refreshments. Ah, it's a great idea. Our original Conchi Tap Room at mile marker 12 and a half is the go-to spot for locals, visitors, anybody looking to quench their thirst. And I've got Sunday covered. We're going to enjoy lunch at Puddler's Kitchen and Tap in Bridgeport, then go outside for a few cold ones at the beer garden, then back in to enjoy the ball game. What a week in all the Conchak and Brewing's unique spots. I'll meet you there for a pint or two. Cheers. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing. We're at Kings Road Brewing Company in Haddonfield. Jody McDonald, Natalie Aganoff, I'm Glenn Mack now. Listen, when you're drinking beer, you gotta eat something. We got this gourmet popcorn from Sparrows right down the street. Pretty good stuff. Very tasty, okay. very tasty. I could eat nice. this whole bag. Now, for decades, the debate has gone on, does beer taste better in a bottle or a can? I will tell you, it used to be that cans were a problem because once upon a time, you could taste the tin from the can. They didn't insulate in property properly. So I get that. Some still say, a bottle is better than a can. Your opinion going into this blind taste test we're about to do, Jody? Being as I am an old school guy, I would subscribe to the old school theory that bottles are just cleaner, bottles are better, bottles okay. are preferable. Nat? You know, I kind of have the same opinion that bottles are better. And because of what you said, Glenn, how there's the old school way, you would think that there's a little mm -hmm. bit of a tin taste. So I don't know if that's just Aluminum perception. is all wine now. See? No, you get no, no bleed over from it. Now, let me tell you this. The National, uh, the Journal of Beverages did a study, a blind taste test. They had people taste the same beer from a can in a bottle. When they showed them what it was, 61% of people said they preferred the bottle, 12% said they preferred the can, 27% no preference. Then they did it as a blind taste test. They didn't know what it was from. When they did that, 45% preferred the can, 41% the bottle, can one? other people no difference. So we're going to do that. We're going to taste it. We got these Coronas. I figured this is as easy a tasting beer as there is, right? Nobody dislikes Corona. It's just kind of easy. So we're going to taste two of them. Let's both, there's one has a dot okay. on, the, on the bottom. We don't know what it is. Okay. Jim, who runs this place, to put it together. We have no idea. Let's taste the one with the dot and see what we oh, think. Oh, with the dot? With the dot. Make sure you got the one dot. with the dot. Okay. Hmm. All right. That's fine. All right. It's quite Everybody nice. good? Clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's taste the one with no dot. Okay. Here's my first question. Do either of you taste a perceptible difference? I feel like the one with the dot is a little bit more carbonated. Okay. A Jody? little bit fresher. All right. Do you taste the difference? No. Okay. Then that's fine. <laughs> so your answer is they taste the same. They really do. I didn't taste the difference. Right, I got to do two. this one more time because yeah, I think so I did. Yeah, I want to try too. again. Me too. Okay. Oops. Yeah, I'm still going dot. Okay, I think the one with the dot actually has a little more flavor to it. Mm -hmm. I think it's th this, uh, the one without the dot is just is bland. This one's got a little more to it. As would I. You Same agree? exact thing, yes. Okay, yes. do you prefer one? I prefer the dot. The dot. I go dot, yes. you go dot, you go. I'm going dot. Dot. Okay, I, I went into this telling you the cans are better than bottles. We will find out. Jim, which one had the dot? The bottle. The bottle. The bottle. We all went bottle. That's okay. There we go. Natalie and I were leaving bottle last well, time. Well, here's, here's what I will tell you. Scientifically, cans are better for your beer. 
can you figure? Be, Wait a minute. Here's why. Here's, Time out, I'm, Barley and Hops. I'm not <laughs> buying this. <laughs> Allow me to say. Please. <laughs> cans offer better protection against sunlight. Um, cans generally will get skunkier slower. These are two fresh beers. You guys preferred the bottles. Any final words on that? Glad I don't I have too. to change my opinion. Uh, yeah. I was a bottle guy, she's a bottle gal yep. ahead of yeah. time. We're, we're happy with our bottles. Yes. Thank you very much. Very I tell tasty. you, that is not the way I Sorry, expected buddy. that to turn out. <laughs> Feel a little stupid. <laughs> Natalie, tell us what you've been up to. What do you got going? You got a podcast going. Oh, yeah. So I have a podcast. It's called The Lipstick League uh, with Nicole Mahalik. She's a country radio personality uh -huh. on WXTU. Uh, sports, pop culture. We have a ton of fun with it. We talk a lot of, you know, sports topics, but also then we talk a lot of Taylor Swift because now it's the best of both worlds that we all live in. <laughs> that we all live in, right? Uh, I'm also a contributor on Fox 29. Nice. Uh, so you can catch me there on the Fantastic Sports Show, um, on Good Day Philadelphia, talking, you know, whatever is going on in the town, Phillies, Eagles, hopefully Flyers and you know, and now I'm here with you guys. So Beautiful. this is this is great and uh, thank you again, Glenn. And I'm gonna believe whatever Natalie says because if she stepped on my foot with one of those boots she's got on, <laughs> she could do damage right now. So I'm with Natalie, whatever she says. There you go. All right, Natalie, pleasure to have you as part of the show. Thank you, guys. When Jody and I get back, we will talk to the owner of this here fine establishment, find out what they're up to, and eat more of this popcorn. And I guess drink out of a bottle. Yes. Who knew? Yes. Jody McDonald, Glenn Mac now, Natalie Eganoff, What's Brewing? Hi, Mom. We're in Bucks County together, and it's exactly what we needed. I can't believe you pulled this off. A surprise getaway to a place that feels refreshing. And it was so easy to get here. We're doing all the things he had planned, and things he didn't plan. I'll tell you more about it when we get home. You and Dad need to come. You'd love it here. Welcome back to What's Brewing. I'm Glenn Mack now with Jody McDonald. We are here with the owner of um, Kings Road Brewing in Haddonfield, Bob Hook Girl. Did I Very get that good. Right? You there did. you go. Very good. Knew it all the time. What are we drinking, Bob? Well, let's see. You are drinking uh, Protect Your Neck, which is a hazy IPA made with 100% Nectaron hops. Ooh, that's a beauty. That's right up my alley. You are drinking another hazy. It's called Saturn Nights. And right. I. Go ahead. I like, you like good, it? Good. Yeah. And, and you're not an IPA guy, not right? Really, you're a lager but guy. That's good. Thank you very much. And I am drinking our new double IPA um, called TBD. Haven't figured out the name yet? Well, actually, yes, that's true. <laughs> um, so, so we entered this, this double IPA into the World Beer Cup. Yeah. And we used TBD as a placeholder. And before we knew it, they actually registered it as TBD. Get out of here! Yeah, so we're we're leaning into it, and we're saying that it means to be delicious. Oh, good. Very so there good. You go. So Jody's a Jersey guy. Jody's lived in Medford for years. You have the other place in Medford, by Correct. the way, right? Right on Main Street. Marlton guy, but Medford, oh, Marlton, right excuse next me, Jody. Door. Right next door. Okay. Right next door. Um, but there's a fascinating backstory to you opening this place in Haddonfield, which is man, talk about being a trailblazer. Well, um, my partners and I. Um, we all live in town, we're all raising our families in town. And the town was dry for 140 years. And, and what we recognized is that if you wanted to get a drink with your dinner, you had to leave town. And we found that we were doing that more and more often. And we were spending our dining dollars, our drinking dollars, and our shopping dollars in other communities. And while, while that's okay, we just thought, could we do something to keep that economic stimulus in town? and we decided to open a brewery. Did you, uh, did you get any opposition to that idea? I mean, it seems like, of course, great. So, so one of the things we did was we researched why the town was dry to begin with, and a lot of people assumed it was because of our Quaker roots. And it turns out the town was dry because they did not administer liquor licenses. And the reason they didn't administer liquor licenses is we have a lot of mom and pop restaurants, and they didn't want one deep pocketed restaurant that had a full plenary license uh, like a big chain kind like of a thing. big chain like yeah. an applebee's or a friday's to okay. open up right so so they made a decision not to offer plenary licenses but they allowed byob and that was that was the window through which we could could slide into town so you opened up here how long ago we opened in december of 2017. 
Oh, okay. So you've been around now about almost six, well, six, six and, and a half, half years. years. Okay. Right. So how has it impact? How is it obviously you're doing well? How has it impacted the, the neighborhood? Well, it's it's actually been great. Uh, so we opened in a small place right down the street. Um, we outgrew that within the first eighteen months. We moved to this location, and uh, uh, New Jersey Winery uh, Heritage Winery slid into our own spot, old, uh -huh. our old spot, and then in the last year, a distillery opened up down the street. Wow. So, the, so the town that was dry for 140 years now has the alcohol trifecta. Jody, look at Haddonfield. <laughs> now, I've been a Jersey guy for 30 plus years. And sometimes it's a little territorial. Maybe it's because I came through the basketball and the high schools against each other. It's a, we're in our town, you're in your town. Do you draw from the other towns, or is it just purely Haddonfield? No, no. Actually, I mean, initially it was mostly Haddonfield. But the longer we've been here, uh, the more people we get from the surrounding areas. We get people taking the Patco Speedline over from Philadelphia nice. all the time, uh, taking the train up from Atlantic City. So we actually draw from a regional audience now. Good. Uh, you do a couple of fun things. I know Jody and I talked about the mug, uh, excuse me, the, the Stein, Stein holding, holding contest, which we really enjoyed last year. We had fun with year. that. You also have a mug club here that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, so, so we, we wanted to build community, you know, and, and so we created a mug club where people, uh, they sign up. It's a one-time, lifetime fee. Mm -hmm. uh, they, Grab me one of those mugs, would you? I want to get one of those mugs on the air. Keep they, going. They, no, they, so, and, and anyone that's in a mug club um, gets a value-priced pour that's larger than a pint. So you have a pint. This is... This is 20, 20 ounces. Nice. Give, um, and it's numbered. If you look on the bottom, it's numbered. 805. So, so people come in, they ask for their mug, they drink from their mug, they get invited to special mug club events throughout the year. Um, we started with 200 mugs, not uh -huh. knowing how it would be received. Uh, we're now up to 900 mugs in Haddonfield and 600 mugs in, in Medford. Now, which is your, you have your own, uh, that you make in preference and the like, do you have one that is your number one seller? No, above and beyond, no questions asked, come and fill in my mug, it's gonna be with this beer. What's your number one guy? Me, personally? No, oh, the sales wise. Oh, sales wise is King's Gold, the one that he crushed on his head earlier. Uh, King's Still Gold, feeling that. King's Gold is our, is our light golden lager. Uh, we brewed it since day one. It has been our, our number one seller since day one and continues to be. Well, listen, you got a lot going on here. Uh, you also, you, got a, you, you carry a couple non-alcoholic beers, which, you know, these days, it's, uh, people want to do that. It's family place. Uh, you got the hard seltzer. You got a really nice array of beers and cans to go. And cans to go. Beautiful. Hey, listen, we liked it so much, we're coming back next week. How about Fantastic. that? Fantastic. I'd love Jody, to Jody, don't go anywhere. Thank we'll you, We'll be friend. back. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next week on What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers Passport. Download your free digital pass and sip your way through Montgomery County by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, featuring four locations and available at beer retailers throughout the tri-state area. By Visit Bucks County. Travel the Bucks County Ale Trail. Get your passport at visitbuckscounty.com. And Ship Bottom Brewery, brewed for the beach and everything else. Locations in Beach Haven, Swarthmore, and Atlin Villa Orchards.